I am currently filming this video the Saturday before Spider-Man Far From Home is released. So therefore, I have not seen it and I don't know whether or not it's any good. Word online is that yeah, it's pretty good. Which of course makes sense. I mean, after all, Marvel does reliably put out good movies very often and Spider-Man Homecoming was probably one of their best, in my opinion at least. In general though, I think Spider-Man Homecoming is a very well-liked entry, not just in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but in the greater Spider-Man film franchise as a whole. There are a lot of people who really like this movie, but surprisingly, there are also a lot of people who don't particularly like Homecoming. But I think I get why people are down towards this movie. It's very different from every other Spider-Man film that's come before it. Hell, it's very different from every other comic book film of the last 30 years. To me, Spider-Man Homecoming is a kid's movie, but I think that's what makes it so great. Superheroes are for kids. Let's just be real here. Yes, adults do like them, but they were created for kids. Kids were the target demographic for years. And whenever there's any major marketing for them, it's always aimed at kids. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that creators don't try to make these characters appeal towards adults. Of course they do. They do it all the time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that creators shouldn't try to make these characters appeal towards adults. Some of the best stories of all time with these characters have been more mature in theme and tone, more adult oriented, if you will. But when you get right down to it, these are ultimately stories about people in brightly colored costumes beating up other people in brightly colored costumes. Also, there are explosions every five minutes. It's pretty silly. But most mainstream superhero movies really aren't made with kids in mind. They would never do anything to risk getting an R rating, but they often deal with very heavy themes and tones and are often very serious in their nature. Even something fun like Guardians of the Galaxy deals with heavy stuff like parental absence, the redemption of a criminal, and I don't know about you, but seeing Quill's mother die of cancer? That kind of messed me up. I guess you can sort of trace this mentality back to Tim Burton's Batman. While yes, that movie featured a lot of people in silly costumes, a lot of explosions, and enough gadgets to keep toy stores stocked for weeks, it played things very serious and straight. I did a video about it a couple of weeks ago. You should check it out. I do impressions in it. Since then, there really haven't been any major superhero movies released with kids in mind as the target demographic. There were the rare oddities like Tim Story's Fantastic Four movies and the Schumacher Batman films. Both cases were movies that were much lighter in tone and didn't really deal with heavy-handed subjects all that much. Those movies were clearly made with a younger audience in mind. The only problem, of course, is that those four movies are terrible. Seriously, I wouldn't really wish them on my worst enemy's kid. Now, to be clear, the previous Spider-Man movies, the Sam Raimi trilogy and the Mark Webb Amazing Duology, are suitable for kids. They're not too overly dark. There's nothing too excessively violent or sexual about them. Yes, the kiss in the rain is sexy as hell, but that's about as bad as it gets. But they're not exactly movies made with kids in mind. As great as the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films were, they're admittedly very slow. There are a lot of scenes of Peter Parker just sitting there contemplating what it means to be a superhero. There's plenty of time given to developing the relationships between Peter and the other major characters. Also, Raimi was never afraid to let his horror movie roots show, and all three films contain scenes and moments that feel more at home in a film like Drag Me to Hell or one of his Evil Dead movies than a typical big comic book Spider-Man film. And as much as we all like to crap on the Amazing Spider-Man films, they too tried to go for a more mature take with the character. Significant time was spent developing Peter and Gwen's relationship. There was a lot of focus on the deaths of Uncle Ben, Peter's parents, and Captain Stacy. Hell, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but in the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, he gets pretty badly f up. He never repairs his suit ever, he just leaves it damaged so that we can always see his blood and bruises. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't let your kids watch these movies. They're perfectly fine for a younger viewer to see. By all means, let them watch the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. And then show them the third so that they know what disappointment feels like. But it's obvious these movies were not necessarily made with children in mind. 
They were more so made for people who grew up reading comic books and were now adults and wanted movies that spoke more directly to them. To be completely honest, Spider-Man 1 and 2 came out when I was still in high school and I didn't necessarily like them all that much when I first saw them. I found them to be very slow, kind of dull in parts, not necessarily what I was expecting of a comic book movie or an action movie in general. But now that I'm a grown ass man, I love these movies and I appreciate them so much for what they are. Okay, so hopefully talking about the previous Spider-Man films and how mature and adult they are has prepped me and you to get to the main idea of this video. That Spider-Man Homecoming is a kid's movie. What the hell does that mean? To be clear, I don't necessarily mean that it's a kid's movie because it mostly stars high school age characters and it's set primarily in a high school where the characters do high school things. I mean, Scream had all that and that sure as shit ain't a kid's movie. However, in contrast to the previous Spider-Man movies, Peter Parker's high school life is front and center here. We see him do a lot of things a high schooler would normally do, like go to class, be part of extracurricular activities, hang out with his friends. The other films didn't really get into this aspect of his life all that much. I mean, in Spider-Man 1, he graduates high school less than halfway through the movie. And The Amazing Spider-Man tried to set him back as a high schooler, but that was really just the place he knew Gwen Stacy from. It didn't really serve any significance to his character development. But by placing the main character in high school and focusing on the life of a high schooler, Homecoming is able to better position itself as a movie for kids who are still in school. It has Peter go through all the things that the target audience is either going to go through or are currently experiencing at that moment. Things like detention, taking a girl to prom, fighting her dad on the side of a crashing plane while he wears big ass weird wings. You know, usual stuff. But when I say that Spider-Man Homecoming is a kid's movie, really what I'm primarily talking about is with regards to its tone. This is a very light and easygoing film to watch. That's not to say that there isn't drama and tension in the movie, there sure as hell is, but it's not the sole focus of the filmmakers. The movie doesn't feel weighed down by the drama and tension, so to speak. You never get the sense that this movie thinks it's more important than it actually is. It does a very good job of keeping things fun and exciting throughout. That doesn't mean that the movie doesn't get serious in spots, it does, but it takes these moments and makes them more of learning experiences, obstacles that can be overcome rather than possibly life-changing moments. It's also a much faster paced movie than the previous Spider-Man films. It does a great job of balancing the big ass action scenes, the more dramatic character development scenes, and the funny scenes in between. The previous films, even the good ones, kind of had a difficult time balancing all that together, if you ask me. By doing this, Marvel and Sony have created a superhero film that is much more accessible to younger audiences than previous films of the genre. Hell, even previous MCU films aren't as accessible to kids as Spider-Man Homecoming is. Remember, this version of Spider-Man debuted in a Marvel movie that, yes, had a lot of great action scenes and a lot of kick-ass moments, but was ultimately a movie about whether or not superheroes should be held accountable for their actions, about the bonds of brotherhood, and about how the sins of the past can come back and haunt you in the present. And yet, one year later, this version of Spider-Man shows up in a movie where he's constantly called Penis Parker. Heh. <laughs> Penis. So why go this route? Well, for one thing, kids just love the hell out of Spider-Man. He might not necessarily be their favorite character, but you hand them a Spider-Man toy and then just watch them light up like Christmas. It just, he makes them so happy. But also too, by this point, we've already had five different live action Spider-Man films that focused on a more adult oriented take on the character. And the last three of those Spider-Man films weren't exactly received well by the general public. So it was time to do something new and different. What better way to differentiate yourself than by shifting the focus away from an adult-oriented Spider-Man film to a more kid-focused Spider-Man film. Now look, I'm not trying to say that adults can't enjoy Spider-Man Homecoming because it's a kid's movie. I mean, we all like Pixar films, right? And I'm not trying to sell the film short by saying it's a kid's movie. Just because a film isn't as dense in symbolism and metaphors and that it's a little bit lighter in tone doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad movie or that the symbolism and metaphors don't exist at all. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is if you found Spider-Man Homecoming to be a little bit light in substance, I think this is the reason why. 
Whether the filmmakers intended to do this or not, Spider-Man Homecoming is a movie more aimed at a younger audience than the typical superhero film is. And in the end, I think this approach wound up working towards the movie's favor. It's a fresh and unique spin on the superhero genre when compared to its contemporaries, a lighter film amongst the sea of more serious and heavy-handed ones. And if you think I'm making too much of this, that I'm making too much of a big deal that a Spider-Man movie was made explicitly for kids, let me remind you that a year before Homecoming came out, somebody got the bright idea to do a borderline rated R Superman movie where Superman openly threatens to murder another superhero who brutalizes criminals. That movie also had an action figure line for kids. So if you were one of those people who found Spider-Man Homecoming to be a little bit lacking in one area or another, hopefully this video shed a little bit of light as to why that might be. And hopefully now you can see the movie in a new light and understand it better and maybe even appreciate and enjoy it better. I mean, if you still don't like the movie, you still don't like the movie, but hopefully now you understand why you don't like it a little bit better than just, it sucks. Now, whether or not Far From Home follows in the same footsteps as its predecessor remains to be seen. It is being made with the same creative team, so I'd imagine they try to keep things as consistent as possible between the two films. But even if Far From Home winds up being a complete tonal shift for the series, that doesn't change the fact that Spider-Man Homecoming is still the perfect Spider-Man movie to show your child. Aside from Spider-Verse, obviously. Now, did you think Spider-Man Homecoming was a kid's movie when you saw it? Did you enjoy it regardless? Did this video give you a new perspective on the film or do you still think it's kind of crap? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. I know people are probably commenting on this before getting to this part of the video, but the reason why I didn't explicitly mention Spider-Verse or other films like The Incredibles while making this video is because those are Animated movies and generally animated films, at least in the United States, are often looked at as kid movies or family friendly movies by default, even if they necessarily aren't. By contrast, live action films are often considered more adult and serious in the Hollywood mindset. And when they are explicitly made for kids, when there are explicitly live action made films for kids, they're often crap. But again, Spider-Man Homecoming is not crap. It's a very good movie. It's just a movie explicitly made for a younger audience in mind, not a 30 something year old white man who complains about comic books from his basement and who has to deal with things like mortgages and property taxes and getting to work on time. Of course, don't forget that we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. This week, it might be a different time because we're away and things are gonna be a little bit different. So just subscribe to make sure you catch all of our videos, click the bell icon so you get notified as to when we go live and put new videos up. And of course, like this video and share with a friend, a friend who's about to babysit somebody's kid and needs to keep the little brat occupied. Show them this video so that they can put on Spider-Man Homecoming and not claw their eyes out at what's on screen. There's only so much Baby Shark an adult can take. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.